Hello, my name is Matt Max. Imagine the following situation. You're in space, orbiting Earth, and suddenly your communicator beeps. And it's a friend calling, and he's like, hey bro, wanna hang out? And you're like, sure, come over. And he's like, yeah, sure, what's your orbit ad? And you're like, I don't know, because you never learned how to actually define an orbit. Well, in this episode, you will. So, if you actually look at this orbit right here, right, it looks like a circle. You know, if you draw a circle on a piece of paper, that's really easy to define, right? You just tell someone the radius and that's everything he needs to know about this circle. But this is a circle in three-dimensional space. And because it's in three-dimensional space, it's a little bit more difficult. Because not only do you have to tell him, yeah, you know, it has a radius of x, y, x, y, or z, you also have to tell him, yeah, you know, it's angled 90 degrees, and then it's rotated like this and that, so you need a total of three numbers to actually define this circle. But it gets even more difficult with orbits, because actually orbits are not circles, orbits are ellipses. And ellipses are a little bit more complicated than usual circles, and you need a couple more properties to 100% define them. To define an orbit, you need a total of five numbers to perfectly define it. And I will go through all of those five numbers and they're actually quite easy. So if you bring those five numbers up, here they are. So the five numbers are eccentricity, semi-major axes, inclination LIN and argument of periapses. Now this sounds really, really complicated, right? Really, really, really complicated. So, but it's not. First of all, apoapsis, periapsis, we actually already talked about this. The apoapsis is a point of the orbit that's farthest away from the center of the body you're orbiting. And the periapsis is the point of the orbit that's closest to, uh, to the center of the body you're orbiting, right? But what is all this other stuff? Eccentricity and so on and so forth. Well, the first two numbers define the shape of the orbit. Eccentricity tells you how far your orbit deviates from a perfect circle. If your eccentricity is zero, or very close to zero, well actually if it is zero, it's a perfect circle. If it's very close to zero, it is almost circular. And you see, if you look at this orbit right here, it is indeed almost circular, right? If you look at the apoapsis and the periapsis, they are only, they are only eight kilometers different from each other. So that's not a lot in space, right? And because of that, the eccentricity is almost zero, because this is almost a perfect circle. If your eccentricity... Oops, I actually didn't mean to do this. If your eccentricity is somewhere between zero and one, then your orbit is an ellipsis. Like, for example, Eve's orbit right here. This is Eve. Uh, I don't think I can actually get the orbital information right now, but you see that this is not a circle, right? This is an ellipsis. And if you go even farther away, like this is even more of an ellipsis, right? So, eccentricity defines how close your orbit is to a circle. Zero is a perfect circle, between zero and one is an ellipsis. And when you get above one, you get escape orbits like those two right here. This one and this one, those are escape orbits. You see that the lines end in nowhere? That's because it's not an orbit, they are actually escaping. That is, that, those are numbers above one, okay? So zero perfect circle between zero and smaller than one is an ellipsis, and bigger than one is an escape trajectory. It's no longer an orbit. All right, so that's the first thing that defines the shape. Now, for a circle, you have a radius, okay? For an ellipsis, it's not really that, that easy because an ellipsis doesn't have has a radius because it's not a circle, right? Where do you actually measure? Do you measure here, here, here? Where do you measure? What you do is, uh, what is actually the case is that you have two different numbers, where a circle only has radius, and ellipsis has a semi-major axis and a semi-minor axis, okay? Semi-major axis, semi-minor axis. They are 90 degrees to each other. And this is basically the longest from the center, and this is the shortest distance from the center. That's all. Okay, and the second property of an orbit is the semi-major axis, this one. Okay, so longest distance from the center. 
if you have eccentricity and the semi-major axis, you know the shape of your orbit perfectly. If your orbit has an eccentricity of zero, that means it's a perfect circle, your semi-major axis is your radius, right? If your eccentricity is somewhere between zero, bigger than zero, smaller than one, then you can calculate the shape of the ellipses by the eccentricity and by the semi-major axis, okay? So the semi-major axis and the eccentricity together give you the shape of the orbit perfectly. But that isn't really enough. Because, let's define, let's define something called a reference plane. What is a reference plane? Well, on a, on a map, okay, on a map you have north, right? And then you can define the direction you're facing in as a deviation from north, okay? You can deviate 10 degrees, maybe 20, 30, you know, 40, 5, 90, and so on and so forth. But you have to somehow define north first. On the Earth, it's pretty easy because you can just hold your compass and it will go north because it's a magnetic north pole. But in space, it's a little bit more difficult. How do you actually define a direction in space? And you do that by creating a reference plane, okay? It's just a plane, a flat plane, right? And you define it so that it has a very well defined uh, very well defined inclination right and it has a defined north okay it has a defined zero degrees the way we do this on earth is that this plane is the plane in our solar system where all of the, of the majority of the planets align on because if you actually look at our solar system most of the planets are indeed in one plane Okay, there are a couple ones that, you know, deviate a little bit, but you can use statistics and then you get the solar plane, right? That's a plane all the, all the planets are on. That's your reference plane. And then you can say, okay, you know, if a planet is, uh, if, if an orbit is like this, it's like 45 degrees from the reference plane. But you need this reference plane first because otherwise you cannot measure any angles, right? You need something to measure from. Okay, just like when you build, uh, when you build something, right? You have a piece of wood like this one, and then you want to measure ninety degrees. You measure ninety degrees from this piece of wood, but you need the piece of wood as reference to know what zero degrees is. The same you do with a reference plane. Now the next thing you do is that you take a star. We all know this. Take Aries, and you define that as zero degrees. I don't know if you can actually see the zero. You define that as zero degrees. And once you define your reference plane, and once you define this star as zero degrees, uh, you can also define a 90 degrees, 180, and so on and so forth. And now you can actually say how an orbit is orientated in space, because the shape alone is nice, right? You have the shape of the orbit, okay, the orbit is shaped like this, but is the orbit like this? Is the orbit like this? Right? Is it like this, like this, like this? You have to define that as well. Because when you look into this game, it's very clear that this blue orbit right here and this gray orbit right here are not the same. Let's assume they actually have the same eccentricity and the same semi-major axes. They are still very clearly not the same, right? The blue one is completely different from the gray one. And if we zoom out and if you look at all the planets in here, we see that even the planet orbits, you know, they deviate quite a lot in their orientation, right? Some are a little bit higher and lower and so on and so forth. So, so you somehow have to define the orientation of an orbit as well as the shape of an orbit. And we do so by inclination and LAN. LAN, <laughs> now the, it's, it's, it's a big word, but stay calm, okay? Longitude of the ascending node. Longitude of the ascending node, L-A-N. Inclination and longitude of the ascending node. What is that actually? Okay, so we have our reference plane. This could be the solar plane or this could just be a plane, ooh, a plane through the equator of the Earth, right? But let's say uh, we have our solar reference plane. Now, what is inclination? Inclination tells you 
how far, if, if your orbit is like this, right? Or if it's angled like this. If it's actually, I shouldn't use a piece of paper for this. If it's actually angled like this, it has an inclination of 45 degrees, okay? If it's angled like this, it has an inclination of 45 degrees. If it's angled like this, it has an inclination of 90 degrees. An inclination tells you, well, the inclination from zero degrees. Zero degrees being the reference plane, right? So, right here, you see that this blue orbit has an inclination of 89.988 degrees, so let's say 90. And indeed, and indeed, if we assume that this gray orbit has an inclination of zero, and it's pretty close to zero, you see that the blue one is indeed about 90 degrees from the gray one, right? So that is inclination, right? Inclination from the reference plane. But what is LAN? Longitude of the ascending node. Well, it's good that you know that your orbit is inclined, but if you have an orbit like this that's inclined 45 degrees, it could be like this or like this or anything in between. How do you know? It could rotate, right, like this. How do you know in which direction it's actually facing? Somehow we have to define that as well. And that is what you define by longitude of the ascending node. Well, actually look at this picture right here. If you look at this picture right here, you see the plane of reference in gray, and you see the orbit in yellowish. Now, you see that there are two points where the orbit actually cuts through the reference plane, right? That makes sense. If your orbit is at an angle, it has to cut through your reference plane at at least two points. One of those points has a certain angle from the zero degrees you defined on your reference plane. Again, we have your, our reference plane, and we defined zero degrees on our reference plane. So, if we have our orbit cutting through our reference plane like this, we can just look on our reference plane, and we see, oh yeah, it cuts at 45 degrees. Right, it cuts here. So now we know it's inclined 45 degrees, and we know it cuts at 45 degrees, so we know our orbit has to be like this. That's all there is to it. Inclination is this, right? And longitude of the ascending node is this. Okay? So, inclination of 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. And then, here's 0 is now facing towards the camera. Okay? Now, longitude of the ascending node, 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. That's all. That's all there is to it. Okay? And indeed, if we look into our game. We have an LAN of 80 degrees of 65 minutes and 50 seconds. And well, you know, I actually can't really show you because I, I don't know where on this planet zero degrees is, but apparently somewhere here. <laughs> so this angle would be 80 degrees, 46 minutes and 50 seconds, okay? That's all there is to it, again. Inclination is this, right? It's the angle from the reference plane, and then the longitude of the ascending node is this. It's from zero degrees of your reference plane. Where does the orbit actually cut the reference plane? But that's not all, okay? So far, we have to find the shape of our orbit perfectly. With eccentricity, that means how far the orbit deviates from a circle. And by the semi-major axis, that is this, the longest point from the center of the, uh, of the ellipsis. But there could be more, right? Inclination defines this, right? And longitude of the ascending node defines this. But the orbit could be like this, or it could be like this. How do we know that? How do we know, know that? Well, it's pretty easy. We do it by uh, the argument of periapsis. And to explain this, look again at this picture. So this picture shows us the inclination and it shows us the ascending node that is a point where the orbit cuts the plane of reference, right? Now, all we need to measure is the angle between the ascending node, that is again where the orbit cuts the plane of reference, and the periapsis. The periapsis being the point of your orbit that is closest to the body that is being orbited. So, for example, this is our periapsis, okay? So if our orbit would be like this, right, it could, would cut our reference plane about here. So let's just 
Put that in. Right? Let's say our orbit cuts the reference plane right here. All we need to do is to measure this angle, right? This angle right here. Let me draw this in as well. Okay, the angle between where we cut the reference plane and the periapsis, that is the argument of the periapsis, and that defines how much our orbit is rotated like this. That's all you need to know to define an orbit, okay? You have eccentricity that defines how much your orbit deviates from a circle. You defined the semi-major axis, that is the longest distance from the center of the ellipsis to, well, the ellipses, right? And that defines the shape of the orbit. You defined the inclination, right? And you defined longitude of the ascending node. And you defined the argument of the periapsis that tells you how much the orbit itself is rotated. Those five arguments perfectly describe every orbit you can think of. And now you can actually tell your friend, you know, bro, my orbit is eccentricity 006, semi major axis 705 kilometers, inclination 89.988 degrees, LAN 80 degrees, 56 minutes, 50 seconds, and argument of periapsis 308.1. And you will know exactly where your orbit is at. He won't know where you are at because you're orbiting, but you know, he will find you sooner or later. My name is B. Mad Max. Thanks for watching this episode, and tune in next time.